So moving ahead with question number three, what are the basic steps to create a service using WCF? In this, what we will do is that uh, basically we will try, we will create a small uh, service using WCF, and uh, then we will try to consume this service and see that what are the various steps involved practically to create a service. Now, what I have done is that uh, because this video is a bit big, I have divided this video into two parts. The first part is where we are going to create the service and the second part is where we are going to consume the service. Okay, so taking up part one, creating the service. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about a small service which we are going to build. This is basically a cost calculation service. So what it does is that it takes up a product name, it takes up product quantity, it takes up product cost. And then it multiplies the quantity with the per product cost and gives us the total cost. So this is the service which we would like to build using uh, WCF. So as I said that this is the first part. So here we will create the service and in the next part of the section we will con we will consume the service using uh, using a ASPX client. Creating a WCF service is a three step process. Uh, as we had previously discussed that we are going to make a service which is basically going to take up quantity per product cost product name and it's going to give us the total cost which is not nothing but multiplication of quantity into the into per product cost. So the first thing we will need to do is that we need to define some kind of generalized interface you know which can help us to communicate this data to the service. I mean it, it will help us to not only communicate input data but also get the output of total cost. So we need some kind of interface. So what I've done is that we are going to define an interface with name called as get total cost. So if I want to get the total cost what I will do is that I will just say okay Hey service, give me get total cost for this product name, for this quantity and for this cost. Right. So let's open our express edition software and let's create this WCF service. Now, in our whole uh, training video of WCF, WPF and WWF, we are going to heavily use express edition. So uh, basically in case you don't have a download of the express edition of 2008, what you can do is that you can go to www.microsoft.com slash express and download the free software from there. Basically, express editions are nothing but they are downsized versions of enterprise edition, which help us to evaluate the quality uh, of uh, Microsoft products. So what I've done is that uh, basically in this uh, WCF service creation, we are going to use the visual web developer edition. So I've installed that in case if you have bought the DVD, Right, you will get this uh, Visual Web Developer Edition as an install installable uh, Visual Web Developer Express Edition as an installable uh, from the DVD. But in case if you have bought the online subscription, then you need to download this from the Microsoft site. Okay, so I've installed my Web Developer Edition. So let's go there and uh, let's click 2008 Express Edition. Now Microsoft has given us a template for WCF service. So file new project, and you can click on WCF service application. I have selected C-Sharp as my language, WCF Service Calculator. Let's give a good name to this. Right. So what it will do is that it will create for me the basic uh, needed files by which I can host a service. Okay. And I'm not going to do anything at this moment. I'm going to just keep it as it is. So let's go back again to a PowerPoint, PowerPoint slide. And what we need to do is that we need to define an interface called as get total cost by which we can communicate with the service. Now for this, you need to define an interface with a service contact contract attribute, right? Now let's go to the WCF service. When we created the service, it has made an interface file called as iService.cs. So let's open this and let's delete the default interface what we had over there and let's paste our interface. Okay. And let's try to understand this first. So basically, what we are telling over here is that the interface is going to be named as I service calculate cost, and the method is get total cost, and you need to give the product data. We will we will come into this product data data type. Okay. Now with this interface also, you need to attribute it, saying that okay, this is a service contract because the service name has to be attributed by service contract. Uh, or the interface has, has to be attributed by service contract. So by this, the WCF service knows that I have to host this as, as a service. Second, the method names are attributed by operational, operation contract attribute. So we need to 
uh, attribute the interface and the method with service contract and operation contract respectively. Okay. So our first step is completed. We have defined the interface. We have defined uh, what's going to be the method name by which or function name by which the client can call uh, the service. Now, if you see the other point, what we have is this complex data which we are going to pass. In other words, the second step what we need to do is that we need to define a data type called as product data which will help us to pass this three data, uh, this three values, I'm sorry, into the service. So, what we need to define is a data contract. A data contract basically is some, something like a complex data type. I will remove the, the default data contract what they had defined and I will paste my data contract here. So here's our data contract. Now what does this data contract tell? Uh, what, what does this data contract say us? This data contract says that basically you are going to pass up the quantity, the product cost, the product name, right? And there is, and, uh, there is going to be a set and a get for every of this property. Now, because this is a WCF data type, or we have exposed this as a service data type, we need to basically attribute it with a data contract attribute and we need to attribute the properties with a data member attribute. So, we have completed two things. We have completed the interface, we have completed the data type. Now, we need to write the core implementation logic. So, now that we have completed the way the external client can communicate with the service, we also need to write the core implementation logic which is nothing but this calculation or we can say our business logic. So let's again move out there and let's take up our implementation logic. Basically I have uh, in order to save time and minimize the video size, uh, I have initially coded this and put it in a notepad and then I'm explaining, explaining you step by step that how we can implement it. Now the iService1.cs basically defines the interface and the data contract. In other words, it defines the service contract and the data contract. The implementation, you need to put it in the service1.svc.cs. We will come to this, what is SVC and etc. But at this moment, just remember that the implementation is written here. So let me delete the default class, which was given by the template. So here's my service calculate total cost. This is my class. The first thing it needs to implement the I service calculate cost interface. Now this I service calculate cost interface is nothing but your service contract which you have defined. Okay. And I have implemented the get total cost function. Okay. And I have written my logic which basically multiplies the product cost into product data into product quantity and returns a string saying the total cost of the product is whatever is the product name and the total cost to the string or uh, total cost. So basically it will give me a string saying uh, that the total cost of the product is x the total cost of the product shirt is 100 rupees or whatever it is or 100 dollars whatever it is. So in other words your implementation logic is defined here. Okay so we have completed the third part of it we have defined or implementation logic. Okay. Now there are a couple of things we need to change in the config file. First what we'll do is that we'll just make our physical file names much better. So what I will do is I will just make this thing as because it doesn't look to have a name called as iService1.cs so let's make it iServiceCalculate.cs the 90% part of the service. 